Hey, this is David Sikinumi Comics. All right, this is going to be another installment of um, how to collect or what to collect and if you want to really collect. <laughs> anyway, this uh, this episode or this segment is going to be um, fine-tuning your collection. Um, so everything I have said regards about how to collect, what to collect, in a um, going back to variant collecting as well this is all part of my experience and i guess you can say kind of uh, a road that i went down regardless if it's right or wrong um have made some few changes so i just thought that i would share my experiences with you as well and hopefully that you'll get a one or two uh tips or of some type of um uh, assistance uh maybe get an idea of what you really want to do in your collection so for all you veteran collectors this i'm sure i'd probably be thinking what this guy talking about but like i said this is just going through my whole uh experience of collecting comic books for the past geez it's going into my sixth year now along with that i took a break but i was collecting way back as well as you know baseball football basketball cards along with memorabilia and things so I consider myself as a collector um, throughout um, my life lifetime, I guess. Um, so, I just want to touch bases with fine tuning your collection with certain keys in your collection that you might want to have. Um, there are so many keys out there, so many keys, and um, you know, sometimes some of the keys could be a grail for someone. Um, you know, it could be uh, something that you had on your wish list, um, but sometimes we do get derailed or we get sidetracked buying all this new comic book or something that something that catches your eyes and kind of take your kind of take a step backwards, and um, it's which is I think to me I think that's all natural when it comes to collecting. Um, we you know sometimes we we can be like um, I don't know. Uh, thoroughbred you know racing don't see nothing but the front the vision and uh, we just go for what we need but sometimes as for me i like to look at the brighter uh, perspective of uh, you know what is out there and instead of just going for one thing because it still brings me joy and at the same time it won't let me break the bank uh doing so uh, one thing is for sure, I would say go hunt and look into Craigslist, um, you know, uh, offer up or, you know, LCS, garage sale, flea market, um, you know, any mean source that you can find a comic book. Goodwill could be some good sources as well too, um, you know, um, it's places that uh, you would never would never really think that you would find a comic book maybe you want to think outside of the box and what I did was one year one day I took a day off and I drew I drew drove about what um, close to about jeez about eight six to eight hours I went from from where I was in Federal Way all the way to Tacoma I went to Tacoma then I went to um, Bellevue from Bellevue to Seattle to Seattle to I mean I just went everywhere and uh, was just contacted people uh, that I went through offer up and uh, met a lot of great guys uh, at the same time I get to see their collection and got to see what they were asking and um, and I was very wise uh, not to take my credit card with me along with that I just had three hundred dollars with me and I said this is all I'm gonna spend on a book whichever comes first all right so I already knew where I was going to go what I'm looking at and um, and this one of the books and and if you're a spawn collector you know by all means I mean this is not the error but I was able to snatch this for I think like eighty five dollars I'm not too sure how much I paid but I did not pay arm and leg for what it costs right now um, he did not have this on the listing but I was going through his collection and I found this I said hey, you know what are you looking for he has some really pressable defects on the spines and the covers along with the back it was 
it was pretty dirty and uh, came back as a 9.6 which I knew this was not a 90 but definitely I didn't thought that this was a 9.6 but this is some I guess some people will call it a grail some people will it a key I just for me what I was saying is this is part of the key issues that you would want to have as a spawn collector or within just the comic book uh, collector itself I mean spawn as you know um, there's Die Hard, uh, you know, um, there's avid collectors, they would pay whatever it takes to get that certain book in a certain grade. Um, but this was for me, it was just to a point where I had the chance to spend $80, 85 to $80 for a book and uh, I was, yeah, and uh, kind of worked out in my favor and uh, didn't break the bank. I still had 220 something dollars thing and uh, end up just not getting too much things uh, because I kind of taught myself that don't get every book that you see uh, and and the thing is when it's a good time to buy um, to buy a key never buy a key when it's at a hot list or when some always you want to kind of think a couple of years ahead so let me tell you something about this book yeah, this is the second printing of Captain Marvel number 17. The first cover appearance of Kamala Khan as Miss Marvel. Alright, so when this book was already on, everybody knew that this was a pretty hard book to get. Alright, at the same time, it was to a point where this book on a 9.8 did not go more for than five six hundred dollars Alright, everybody thought that this was, you know, modern modern being a modern how can it be you know blah 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 you know a lot of people saying that it's crazy to think that this will hit like three to four thousand dollar book all right as for me uh kamala khan it's it's a modern it was about the same time not not the same time i would say a few years back of which i missed and i just thought you know hey you know what this, i think this is a great character and i did some studies on this book and i uh, figured you know why not pick it up 90 was a little bit too much but I was able to get this 96 for I believe was for $250 at that time I think this was many years ago and I just thought you know what uh, maybe I can crack it open and upgrade it but unfortunately there is some few flaws that definitely do this will not be bumped up to 96 I decided you know what let's just keep it and of course Kamala Khan you know, uh, Disney Plus show, and now that book is a little over what uh, fifteen hundred dollars. So, um, I'm not here to gloat about my success. I just want to focus. I just want to have you focus or talk about being focused on what books does it really matter, and what key books that you want to have stay in in a budget at the same time. You want to be focused on what you really want in your collection that defines your defines you or defines your collection at the end. Um, I don't know if there's ever going to be the end, but my end game will be once I attain an AF-15 uh, first appearance of Spider-Man, and that's it. I don't ever need to buy another comic book again. I think that was to to a point where I think the joy of collecting or something has just pretty much gone and. And it's not like that I could not buy it right now, but I enjoy collecting and maybe at one point if somebody's willing to pay I don't know 40 grand for my collection. I said, you know what and for that book I really need to do it and but as of right now I'm so attached to my comics like I can pretty much not do without AF 15 as a as yet another book that I uh, that I had to get uh, that I picked up is because when I started collecting, uh, DC DC Universe Rebirth has kicked in, you know. Take and uh, remember, this was the uh, the one out of one hundred uh, sketch variant, um, and this was available at midnight release. So uh, I remember I overslept. I woke up the next morning <laughs> thinking, "Damn it!" Uh, yeah, one of the LCS did a midnight release and. Um, found out that this was pretty much gone uh, and um, 
and throughout the years, you know, this was a pretty hot book at time, and I wasn't going to spend uh, two, three hundred dollars on this book. Um, so I waited, 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 and uh, I believe this was sometime early this year, if not last year, I picked it up for I believe was under hundred bucks. So with shipping and everything, it was a hundred dollars. Uh, maybe I might have overpaid for it, maybe not, but definitely this is a key issue that started everything with the Batman along with the button. Uh, if you're not familiar with the Watchmen, so it's a doomsday clock um, mashup and uh, it took forever but eventually this kind of kick-started the whole DC Universe rebirth and um, and I enjoyed every read. I remember picking it up, uh, picking up Batman, Detective Comics, jeez, uh, uh, Teen Titans and things like that every because this came like semi-weekly so every two weeks I'll pick up a new title and start reading it which I enjoyed some at the end I decided not to get but this was one of the key book that I wanted to get in my collection so at the same time uh, the point that I'm trying to get here is that waiting for that certain key or the certain books that you want you don't really need to get it at that time when it's hot Yes, there is a time that maybe you could have flipped it, so on, but, but this is not about flipping. This is more about concentrating on what books that matters to in your collection um, for you new collectors. Um, so be be focused. You don't have to get every book out there. And there are certain books that matter to you due to nostalgia of it or due to something that you have missed when you came. You don't have to get it right there and then. Yes. Some books does rise in prices as time passes, but most of the time it will stay uh, within the ratio depending and it will be attainable. Um, but another thing is X-Force number six, um, it was at number nine, I believe it was six, first full appearance of Apocalypse. Remember when the X-Men came out, it had a huge, huge um, Increase of I believe that book was at one point about twelve thirteen hundred dollars for nine point eight Especially on a newsstand um, Then right now if you really look at it, it's probably on the newsstand about six seven hundred dollars and a nine eight for a direct edition You look at about four fifty to five hundred dollars. So Clearly it was a good point that I that I did not pick it up when it did um, Other thing is right here uh, Batman number one, New 52. Um, I read the whole series of the new Batman 52 and God, Scott Snyder has done incredible, incredible storyline with Greg Coppola as interior art along with cover art. Um, why I picked this up was not due to any monetary value. It was just to a point where I enjoyed the read so much. I had to pick up the very first key issue. I say it's key because it does has a significance to it. It has uh, a, like a cameo or somewhat storyline that goes into Court of Owls. And if you have, like I say, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. But the thing is, for you new collectors, if you really want to get in depth, I would probably invest maybe. 15 10 15 dollars for a trade on a on a title that you really want to look into and see if you really what the whole hype is all about i mean if you haven't read hush i believe was from eight um uh, six six zero i believe it was batman 608 all the way down to batman 880 i i, I think some correct me if i'm wrong pretty much i am but that whole hush series was just amazing. Um, it was a roller coaster ride. It, I mean, it was clearly total detective, awesome action. Every pretty much every key character in Batman continuity was involved. And uh, at the end, I'm not gonna spoil it, but I just think, what really? But going back again. Batman, Flash, Aquaman, so and so, pick the 
this is something that pick the character that kind of resonates with you. As for Batman, it, it does. Um, to a point where he pretty much lost everyone and he's, he's rich enough. He's pretty much bored. He wants to get revenge and and he dresses up as a bat and justify this. He goes rogue vigilante style. And at, at the same time, you're very fortunate to have a friend that he have like uh, Commissioner Gordon, you know, and, um, and he has his sidekick with Robbins and trying to help out his, in his own way. Uh, but yeah, so Batman is something that I would pick up um, and I would try to get his one of his key issues. Golden Age, Silver Age is not my thing. Modern is pretty much, I would say from Copper Age, from late Copper Age to now, is pretty much what I would focus on because anything that is Silver Age Golden is just too much for me. Air 15, yes, early Silver Age, but that is my holy grail and that's my end game. So that's why I put that book at the top of my list so I can stop with everything. Um, other thing is that if you like independence, uh, there's a lot of great books out there. Um, great story, but will it be a key issue? I don't know, but I remember reading Saga. I I was at a Barnes and Noble, grabbed the trade and read. I think the first volume, and uh, I go, wow, this is pretty cool. I I enjoyed it. Um, maybe I need to go back and uh, read volume two and three and four. But then I decided, you know what, I'm gonna pick up Saga number one. Um, for the sake of, I really enjoy that read. Um, at this time, I think I bought this for raw copy for about $85, $90. With shipping close to, I believe it was close to $100. Um, at the time, yes, it was going for about $300, I believe, uh, for a 9.8. So for spending $100 on a high-end grade for $100, I thought that was worth it. Got it graded, came back as a 9.8. Super stoked. Um, there's also an RRP of this version, which is a little bit too much for me to spend on that kind of uh, money. But also to a point where this has gone up. It's about seven hundred dollar book now. So within the past four five years, it has doubled. So I thought that it was pretty amazing for a point where that it has no um, no. Uh, it hasn't been option, has no talk about being any live action or show on any streaming or any programs like that, but just clearly on a solid story done by, uh, I believe, Brian K. Vaughn and, uh, and Fiona Staples, you know, doing the art. It was just to a point where like, wow, I'm just blown away. So in my beginning of my collector, I had to get everything because the formal kicked in, fear of missing out. Um, that is completely out. And now I kind of look ahead uh, two, three years down the line. It's never, sometimes never going to be a hit. And I think my next one will be failed speculation or failed things that uh, I thought they would probably go but did not. Um, and I think that would be a great segment as well too. So. For you guys, for new collectors, you know, don't get all the books that you need out there. At the same time, don't break your bank doing so. All right. If you have time to go out, hunt is like you're not gonna hit a key book all the time. But at the same time, when you are going through the books, really think what you want. Just because it's cheap, it doesn't mean anything. But if you got it cheap and you're able to flip it to Go for that grail or for, for the key. I mean, by all means, do what you need to do. But if you're not a seller, a full-time seller, or, or selling in a daily basis like myself, trust me, it's going to hurt your wallet. I mean, it's to a point where there are certain books that came out you really want to, but you already spent and you don't want to dig into your saving. I can go on and on and on. But just be careful out there. It just... Focus on the characters that resonates to you. Focus on the story that works for you and get that key issue book that means something for you. Um, if you're coming, like anything, um, like certain covers that works for you, you know, 
that resonate you, you know, things like that. So this is about key issue. There's a lot of key issues out there. Just focus on what you want and how you want to define your collection toward at the end. And as for me, you know, grabbing this like years on early, I was just very fortunate. Does it mean that paying seven hundred dollars is too much? Maybe not for you, but for me, I'm very happy with what I have right now. Uh, so I hope you like this segment of to a point where focus on what key issue that you want to have in your um, in your collection. And some I just showing the book so that you don't always have to look at this. So sometimes it's joyful to watch some books, look at some books and show some books, you know, yada yada yada, instead of just looking at me and talking. And um, and this God, this is one of the Phil Speck. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? Um, this was a great, great read. I enjoyed it. And uh, being a one on one hundred, I mean, there's about probably about half a million but that was printed, along with a lot of variants that was available. Uh, so one on one hundred is not a very low print run, at w what I can say. Um, but at the same time, it is what it is, and I enjoyed it, and it means something to me. And it will I sell it? I don't know, maybe down the line, if I need extra $50, $60, I probably will put it on eBay. Hopefully that somebody has the same type of uh, nostalgia and wants to grab it for cheap, and, and that's how it's going to be. Um, but until next segment, guys, I think the next segment will be what I talked about. It's called Failed Speculation, and uh, and I'll tell you exactly how much I pay for each book, and uh, you, can, you can tally up the total and see how much I wasted. All right, guys? Um, Thanks for watching, staying in tune, and uh, didn't mean to be over 20 minutes, but it is. So uh, thanks for hanging in there, guys. And uh, for your new collectors, uh, stay tuned. I have more videos to come your way. All right, aloha, mahalo, and shoots.